Hey there everyone, Aaron here. Welcome to another episode of Gideon's Tactical. Today we're going to be testing out the Topps Knives Tom Brown Tracker full size. I got this on loan from a buddy of mine. Thank you James for letting me borrow this while you're making some Kydex for me. Some of my other blades. We're going to give a shout out to you James. Uh, but we are going to get out here today and really thrash on this thing. Uh, you know this has been around for a while. It's definitely a unique design. Kind of looks like a Tyrannosaurus Rex tooth almost. And uh, kind of what it's designed to be is a multi-tool for the woods. It's not a hatchet. It's not a knife. It's kind of putting the two together and trying to give you kind of an all-purpose one tool that you can take out into the woods and survive and be able to do a lot of chopping tasks, do a lot of batoning tasks, and cutting and carving tasks, and do all of those not necessarily exceptionally well, just like a multi-tool. It's not necessarily the best tool for any one situation, but it can cover a lot of situations. I think the same thing would be true for this Tom Brown tracker. So let's go ahead, give you guys a couple basic specs, and we'll get out here and begin to use this thing and give you some concepts of the best way to use a Tom Brown tracker. Hey everybody, let's go ahead and look at some of the specs here on the Tom Brown tracker. Now uh, the total length when I bust out my tape measure from the tip to the handle scales is six and a quarter inches and then the actual cutting edge is just over five and a quarter inches and when I looked on the top's website all the specs are correct except for the fact they say the cutting edge is four and a quarter inches and just to show you that that is not the case I think it might be a typo over there at tops uh, on their website when I line up the cutting edge which is four and a quarter on the bob you can see that there's a huge amount left over on the tracker so just to be clear you're getting five and a quarter inches on the Tom Brown tracker unless for some reason they have shortened the blade in recent years in the design because everything else the weights the same all the cutting edges are the same on their specs the the total overall length everything's the same so I think it's just a typo over there at tops even though this is about two years old I do believe so um, with that being said let's go ahead and look here at the actual blade obviously very unique to sweep up design you got two and just over a quarter inch right here on this cutting edge and then you have three inches on the sweep up design it's made out of 1095 high carbon steel with a Rockwell hardness of 58 it is a quarter inch thick huge piece of slab of steel Full tank construction, my car to handle scales. Got that saw back right there. That saw back length is uh, two and a quarter inches as well. That's designed more for making notches and things because of the weight. It's much more capable of just chopping and the weight on this thing is 28 ounces. No joke. This weighs more than an Essie Hungalus and that blows me away. 28 ounces on this thing. So I mean it is definitely designed to be basically a multi-tool hatchet slash knife when Tom Brown designed the tracker here. So those are just the basic specs for us here on this item. Let's go ahead. I'll begin to talk about the blade, show it to you in action and begin to see if the Tom Brown full-size tracker is going to be worth a purchase for you. So with this initial cutting edge that's really designed to do exactly what I'm doing, you know, this first grind angle right here, which is a saber grind, you can see that I'm absolutely able to get, you know, shavings for a fire. And it's not too bad. It's very comfortable up top with this really nice kind of valley that they give you for your thumb to rest. I can put this here all day. Very comfortable. You know, it's got a pretty wide, you know, spine at a quarter inch thick. So it's not as amazing as, say, you know, like an eighth inch blade, you know, that we've reviewed here on the channel or like a Mora. But it's definitely going to get the job done when it comes to carving, you know, for fire prep or making a notch for... Uh, you know, a tent peg or something like that. The only problem that I really have overall with the ergonomics are right here, these two humps, and you know kind of my philosophy on handles of knives. Anytime you see these humps, they more often than not become a hindrance than a help when you are doing particularly hammer grip cutting and carving. Uh, they just tend to create hot spots, and this is absolutely the case with the tracker as well, is that when I hold it, and I'm trying to do a hammer grip and do carving like what you see, my middle finger is right there on the hump. And I wear large size glo uh, uh, gloves, so I have large hands. And it's just not very comfortable. It's not cramping my hand yet after about five minutes of carving here, but I know over time it is gonna become uncomfortable, even in a hammer grip like this. Over time, I'm just not gonna wanna do it as long as say, if I was holding, because it's on me today, I'll use it as an example, my uh, BK-16. Very ergonomic, no you know handle uh, grooves or you know hills and valleys to worry about um, on the BK16. It's just very smooth, simple profile there on the handle. Whereas with the tracker, these humps right here can kind of tend to create hot spots 
in your hand. But overall, for this type of work that you see me doing, you could absolutely do enough to survive, you know, do all the tasks that you would need to to get your fire started, uh, you know, or to make a spear for fishing or, you know, to defend yourself or go hunting or, you know, make spikes for a, a trap, something like that. You could absolutely do it with this knife. Okay, so let's talk about the saw back here on this knife. This is my very first saw back that I've used from Topps, so we're about to test it out here for the very first time. And Topps puts this on some of their larger, heavier, thicker knives that are about a quarter inch thick, you know, and, and really heavy. And the reason that they do that, I believe, is because they understand that the likelihood of you being able to really do a lot of notching with this knife or other knives that are this big and this thick is pretty slim. You know, it's not gonna be comfortable, it's gonna be kinda hard just because of how thick and wide the blade is. So they design these not really to be a saw to like saw off limbs, but to make notches for you know traps and different things like that tent pegs so we're going to give it a shot here nice it's biting in real quick very nice there you go look at that very quickly with that saw back I was able to get a perfect notch. Now I can run paracord around that. You know, if I'm making some sort of a snare or trap, if I'm using it as a tent peg, you know, to hold down my tarp for my hammock or something like that, that was very easy to do. So that saw back is definitely going to be useful for you, particularly with notching tasks. Okay. So batoning should be really nice and easy because it is a quarter inch thick. We've got five and a half inches of cutting edge. I'm going through some knots there. Real nice and easy. Very easy to baton with the Tom Brown. Do it one more time here. That saw back will give you a little bit of damage on your batoning stick, but nothing like a, a clip point wood. Now we'll go a little crazy. We're gonna use this big fat piece of wood here. We'll see how it does. Can almost barely span it. It is like literally shoving a wedge through that piece of wood. Nice, look at that. There we go. So batoning, you're definitely gonna be able to baton like a BK2 wood, an SE5, those type of knives. It's gonna be able to baton just like those and do really well. All right, let's go ahead and look at the Kydex sheath here that comes with the tracker. Real nice design that we would know from Tops, And it comes with two belt clips you know, 360 degrees rotatable that we know from tops so that you can carry it scout style. And that's really how it's designed to be carried because it is, again, 28 ounces. That kind of balances the weight out for you a little bit and you can carry it horizontal along the small of your back attached to your belt. That's how it's originally designed because you cannot rotate the clips over to the other side of the sheath and carry it naturally, you know, in a right-handed way. If you're left-handed, you could totally do that and, you know, take this one out and then carry it just a natural kind of sheath design, you know, drop leg on your, on your hip. But uh, it's originally designed to be carried scout style along the horizontal part of your, the small of your back. Great sheath though, no complaints, good kydex. Easily, you know, take the item out, click it back in. Good quality kydex that we know from tops. You can also use the tracker as a makeshift shovel. It's definitely got a wide enough blade there to be able to dig out your fire pit. Obviously not ideal, a shovel would be better, or a piece of wood, but if this is all you got, or you're pressed for time because of weather conditions or something like that, lighting conditions, you can easily use this to do some digging. Nice. So we're gonna process this piece of wood here. Just kind of show you the chopping capability of the Tom Brown. And again, remember they're try I believe it was originally designed, and I could be totally wrong, so someone can correct me on the comments, but it's supposed to be kind of this hatchet slash knife design. 
and that's definitely kind of how it's shaped. It's definitely how it's weighted. You know, very heavy for a knife. Heavier than my Hungerless, my SE Hungerless. But you can see, it's definitely clearing away these branches and limbs. Without too much trouble. This is not gonna chop as well as a hatchet that weighs about the same weight though. Um, so don't try and fool yourself in thinking, oh, it's gonna chop just as well as my, you know, uh, Fiskars hatchet or something like that. It'll do better than most other knives of this size. Like it's definitely chopping better than my BK2 or an SE5, but a hatchet will still chop better. And again, this is the idea is a multi-tool, not necessarily one item that will excel at one task. This is supposed to be excel at multiple tasks and do a good job. Not an amazing job at chopping, not an amazing job at batoning, not an amazing job at carving. It's supposed to do all those tasks well, but not exceptionally well. So you can see there, it's definitely taking out the chunks. I'm hitting right here where the secondary bevel starts for that big sweep up. That's kind of right where I'm connecting. You can see it's definitely biting in really well. The handle design is great for chopping. Got that nice sweep back, so it's gonna stay in my handle for a long period of time. That's really good. And then I'm able to get my index finger right there on the groove. Good lanyard. And you're good to go for chopping. There we go. So I would rate this as probably one of the better chopping knives that we've seen here uh, on the channel. I think an SE Hungerless or you know an RTAC or an SP51 or 53 will chop just as well as this, uh, but it will definitely chop better than an SE5 or a BK2 just because it weighs more and the design of the blade lends itself to chop well, but it will not chop as well as like the Fiskars X7 that we've seen here or uh, some of the Schrade hatchets that we've reviewed here on the channel uh, because those are you know designed purely for chopping and they will still clear and chop branches and chop wood better than your Tom Brown. All right, everybody, so you've seen the Tom Brown Tracker in action. And this is my kind of overall feel for this blade. If you are looking for a wilderness multi-tool, in other words, one tool to take up to do a plethora of things, the Tom Brown Tracker is amazing and could absolutely be that tool for you. If you are more of a person like myself, who I prefer to have a very ergonomic, lighter weight, you know, carving blade, bushcraft knife, if you will, the size of maybe like a Topps Bob or a BK-16, you know, something like that. And then you want to have either a large wilderness blade or a hatchet, something like that which is more how I like to use things and more of a philosophy, then the Tom Brown Tracker probably is not for you. Just because it is very heavy uh, and it's not necessarily the most ergonomic handle in the world for lots and lots of carving tasks, but it's not designed, again, to be a bushcraft knife. It's designed to be kind of the most epic survival slash multi-tool of all time is how it's kind of designed. So if you are like the idea of an all-encompassing multi-tool fixed blade that can do lots of different tasks, the Tom's Brown Tracker, I think, might be right up your alley. If you're not really that type of person, you're more like me, you like to have really ergonomic little knives, and then you like to have a big chopper or a big axe, then I don't think you're really going to enjoy the Tom Brown Tracker. So ultimately, it's your philosophy. you got to figure it out, and uh, this could either be the best thing you ever purchase or the worst thing you ever purchase depending on your philosophy of getting out there and surviving and doing camping, backpacking, and wilderness tasks. But uh, the quality is absolutely there on the Tom Brown Tracker. The quality is there, the heft is there, and this thing is absolutely indestructible and has seen lots of years of use and uh, is going to see plenty of more years of really hard abuse and keep on kicking. So I hope this video has helped you guys out. Hopefully it will make you help you make a really good decision when it comes to either purchasing or passing on the Topps Knives Tom Brown Tracker full size. Thanks everybody for watching. Well everyone, thank you so much for watching this particular episode of Gideon's Tactical. Please subscribe, comment, like the videos, share the videos, and check out our Facebook page. You can find it on the YouTube homepage of Gideon's Tactical. Like our Facebook page where you'll get updates of upcoming videos. Uh, you'll get photos as well as upcoming gear, new gear releases, you know, that products and companies that uh, are released, as well as behind the scenes footage and bloopers that you'll never see make it to YouTube. So thanks so much for watching everyone. Stay equipped, stay prepared. We'll see you out there.